Welcome back, honors. All right, we haven't had one of these in a little while, but lacrosse season pretty much officially ended today, so I'll be able to get into this a little bit easier, kind of get after it a little bit. But let's keep going where we left off in class. We left off talking about the Revolutionary Tribunals, all right? So the Revolutionary Tribunals was, let me come over here a little bit, was a series of trials and courts, okay, that were held by the leaders of, there we go, the leaders of the National Assembly, right, during the wars against Austria and Prussia, all right? So meanwhile at home, the, J the Jerry's and the Garys, we talked about them today, right, the Jacobins and the Girondins are going to create uh, a tribunal system to keep the public distracted and keep them happy with the violence that they've been given, right? Get that guillotine to good work, efficient, egalitarian, ah, provide fodder for the people of the revolution, right? Keep the Jacobins and the violent people happy with these revolutionary tribunals. So what they're going to do is they're going to use them to put political leaders and big wigs or people that are like a part of the public on trial, okay? So usually these trials will result in death. There is no appeal. There is no jury. You don't get representation. And the trials particularly hate the royal family and those associated with them, okay? This is what they looked like. The revolutionary tribunals were a big marquee thing to discuss in the French Revolution. Just kind of discuss the severity and the extremism that, ironically enough, the dorm set up, but is now not being enacted, right? The dorm is now looked at as a the Declaration of the Rights of Man, except for the royals. All right, so it's kind of like the revolutionary tribunals are kind of like that one-two punch of getting even, right? Um, but they were massive. Huge crowds inside of them, throwing things at the accused. Human rights are going out the window here, and it's kind of like, well, you did this to us, now we're going to do this to you kind of stuff. Now, speaking of the revolutionary tribunals, one of the people that's going to be put on trial is Louis XVI himself, okay? Louis XVI goes on trial because the National, don't write convention, write assembly instead, okay? The National Assembly decides to put Louis on trial. Now, for his crimes against the people. So, some of the charges that were issued against him have to do with uh, the attempted escape and commanding of an army to come back and reinvade, uh, going against the revolution, uh, crimes against human rights, things like that. But, ironically enough, the Garys did not want his death, okay? The Garys did not want his death because they knew what would end up happening. It's going to create a power vacuum that someone else is going to step in and fill, okay? So the Jacobins, on the other hand, the Jerry's, are going to realize that, oh, wait a minute, we outnumber the Garys in the committee right now and in the National Assembly. So you know what? Boom! Put him to death. So the Jerry's command his death, and they vote for his death, okay? So what's going to end up happening, though? At the scaffold, Louis XVI says, I forgive those who are guilty of my death. So even at his death, he did not see himself as the cause of this revolution. And he is going to be executed in square that his father built. It was actually a statue in the palace that, or the uh, palazzo, or however you say, the square, the square of Concord, or this, like, whatever, that Louis XV had built, and it was literally looking at him while he was executed. And this is what it looked like, actually, at his execution. This was in 1793, okay? So the execution of Louis XVI is a massive, massive event because that power vacuum has now been created. Now that the king is officially dead, who is going to be our leader? Who is going to step up? Who is going to command the, not the troops, but the presence of the people in the government? That's when these guys come in. I call them the cops, all right? So also known as the Committee of Public Safety, okay? So the Committee of Public Safety was the, air, the, the group that entered in after the death of Louis to command the people of France and to keep the revolution going, okay? So... What's going to end up happening, though, is they take over following the death of Louis. There we go. And they are going to be started by two guys. They acted as a de facto monarchy, all right? Now, what I mean by de facto monarchy is they held the powers that a king would have in a limited monarchy, even though they were an organization of people, all right? So they were led by two individuals that people began to refer to as the mountain, all right? So write that down. The Mountain, they were called, because these two individuals sat up high during the committee meetings, higher up than everybody else, and everyone wanted to be a part of The Mountain. You wanted to be on The Mountain if you were a part of the Committee of Public Safety. Now, the two guys that were the original Mountain were known as Maximilian Robespierre and Georges Danton. All right? Now, 
Maximilian Robespierre, above him, right, he is a Jacobin, all right, he's a Jerry. And then above Georges Danton, right, that he is a Girondin. He's a Gary, all right? So really, really quickly to give you a heads up, you know that Maximilian Robespierre is a Jacobin. He is into the violence. He is into all that stuff, and this is what he looks like. That is Maximilian Robespierre, dashing young individual, very, very headstrong, very, very fast-witted. And then you got this guy. Ha! That's George Danton. Oof. Looks like a toad and a person had a baby. All right, anyway, now, fun fact about these two guys, though. Due to the conspiracies and the paranoia of trying to be the mountain and lead upon high, Maximilian Robespierre is actually going to accuse Danton of counter-revolutionary ideas and have him executed by the Committee of Public Safety. And then the people that come in to replace Danton are going to have this thing called the Thermidorian Reaction, and they're going to accuse Robespierre of being a new monarch and have him executed. So literally the group that the two of these guys started had both of them executed. So they're both going to die due to the guillotine. You don't need to write this down. But this is just to show you the extremism that the Committee of Public Safety is going to take France towards. So the Committee of Public Safety decides to make a lot of changes to try and lead the old France in the past and bring in a new era of the new France. And the old France is going to be like all the months and the days. They're going to change all of them. They change every name and month of the or every name of the week, every name of every day of the week gets changed, and every month gets changed to a new one as well, trying to create the new French First Republic, right? Blah. And then they're going to drop Sundays altogether because they believe that the Catholic Church was one of the biggest leaders in why the revolution was necessary. So they're like, you know what? People had to go to church on Sundays? Not anymore. So they go to a six-day week. They close down all the churches. Every month was made to have 30 days, so the calendars didn't even work right. They actually even wanted to turn Notre Dame into a shopping mall because they're like, you know what? If we're going to close the church, might as well use the big one to sell some stuff. Anyway, now... Um, you know, like Louis XIV, he needed shirts back in the day. Somebody had to put them on him, so got to go buy them somewhere, right? Uh, but yeah, this is just to show you that the Committee of Public Safety was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they were wild. They were very, very radical. They were just, ah, way, way, way over on the other side, right? Extreme, very, very extreme, the Committee of Public Safety. Now, anyway, then the Committee of Safety, Public Safety, along with Maximilian Robespierre and George Danton at the very, very beginning, and hand-in-hand -hand with Marie Antoinette, are going to usher in a thing called, you can't see it right here, but it says terror. The reign of terror. The ROT. Okay? After the death of Louis in 1793, the reign of terror begins under the Committee of Public Safety. And what that is, is Marie Antoinette basically trying to keep herself alive. Right? Marie Antoinette is going to lead a parade of prominent and not so prominent citizens to their deaths. Because it had become apparent by this point that there are a lot of people that are not even necessarily, count, necessarily counter-revolutionary, but they're growing tired of the revolution, all right? They're growing tired of the fact that they can't even go grocery shopping without stepping over a dead body. They're growing tired of the violence. So Marie Antoinette wants to keep the revolution going, but she doesn't wants to seem like she's backing it, okay? So the guillotine, which is the new instrument of egalitarian justice, was put to work. And what's going to end up happening, though, is public executions are going to become an educational experience under the reign of terror. People are going to be encouraged to sit and knit in the crowds while trials and executions were happening so they could see what would happen if you spoke out against the revolution, right? The Revolutionary Tribunal is going to order the execution of 2,400 people in Paris. 2,400. That is insane. That's like... That's three Camden Catholics. Three of us. Three Camden Catholics in one year. And by July of 1794, 2,400 people had lost their lives to the Gantian. That's not limited or not including the 30,000 people all over France that died under the reign of terror. And these are French citizens. French killing the French. Because in the reign of terror, it was designed to fight the enemies of the revolution, right? It was designed to prevent counter-revolutionaries from ganging up and gaining ground, right? It was meant to scare away any ideas of the revolution. And a counter-revolutionary is somebody who wants to give power back to the king and the nobles. They want to go back to the old way because they're tired of all this violence and extremism, right? So most of the people rounded up for the reign of terror, though, were just not even aristocrats. They weren't even from the original second estate. They were just kind of like ordinary people. They were just normal. Uh, you could like An entire man and his family could be sent to the guillotine just for saying anything negative about the revolution, being like, man... I wish they would stop killing all these people. Bang, gone. Reign of terror, executed. Dunzo. So the Jacobins and the Girondins are then, during the reign of terror, going to begin to battle for control. Okay? 
Don't write this down, okay? Do not write this down. Look at me. Don't write this down. This is just an example, okay? To show you how the Jacobins and the Girondins begin to fight and hit each other in the head trying to get control over the government. Because at this point under the reign of terror, everything's getting out of control. So this is a good example, though. But a guy by the name of Jacques-Louis David is a Jacobin journalist. He's this guy right here. Very, very prominent figure. Actually, his brother marries uh, Napoleon's sister, and they become stepbrothers, all right? So, like, uh, Napoleon actually ends up being related to this guy by, like, in-laws, right? He's an in-law of Napoleon. Now, the, he's a Jacobin journalist, very, very popular, and he publishes lies about the royals and the Girondins because freedom of press, right, under the dorm. I can say whatever I want to at this point. He's a guy that encourages the violence, okay? He's going to be arrested for crimes against the revolution because he's actually saying that the Girondins are leading them down a wrong road. But remember, the Girondins are a part of the revolution, whether he likes it or not. So the Jacobins, though, are going to have him acquitted, okay? As in, the revolutionary trial doesn't put him to death. But the Girondins are going to be, the Garys are massively pissed off about this. They're very, very upset. So the Jacobins are obviously gaining power. They're beginning to tilt the scales towards their side. So the Girondins decide to fight back a little bit. And they have a woman go into his bathtub while he's bathing, and they stab him to death 17 times in the stomach while he bathes, right? This is a very, very famous painting to show just the outlandishness of the revolution by this point. It is uncontrollable. It is getting ridiculous. It is insane, okay? So what ends up happening is the directory is formed. The directory is formed because people are growing tired of this. It's not stable. There's too much bloodshed. The reign of terror is insane. Maximilian, Robespierre, and Dant are already dead by this point. They were killed by the organization they started. The Committee of Public Safety is doing too much. So they need something more moderate. So what they do, by 1795, the Republic vanishes, okay? There's no more French First Republic. They move to the Directory. And that's a five-man executive branch with business interests that have an executive controlling power in the state of the government. So they become like a presidency, but there's five of them. There's five of them so they can break a tie if they need to. The government is now called the directory. It is extremely ineffective. And it leaves the door wide open for not the hero they wanted, but the hero they needed, Mary-Kate. Not Batman, but Napoleon. Very similar, though. We will talk about him tomorrow. Good stuff. Very proud. French Revolution pretty much done. Napoleon, getting after it. Blah, 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 blah. And we're going to look to have your next test on... See, tomorrow's Thursday. On Monday. Okay, so we're going to play a game tomorrow, and I'm going to give you your study guide going into the weekend. Deal? All right? No, wait. Game Friday, Napoleon, study guide going into the weekend. Y'all have a good one. I'll see you guys later.